What's going on? I'm Joe with Brewers Industries. We're out here in Eagle Lake, Texas doing skill carving. And uh, I get asked this a lot about bipods and bipod choice. And so we thought we'd take a couple minutes to talk through this. We've got a few pieces in front of here, in front of us. We do not have all of them. I'll talk through a couple other good ones. Um, there's some pros and cons to everything and everything becomes very dogmatic. And so you ask one person and they build their course around an atlas and you have to be able, you have drills that are atlas specific that that benefit features that this bipod has that all of a sudden, you know, something like the Harris then doesn't work as well. And then you go, oh, well, that's the reason why I use this. Yes, there's reasons that all of these, except the Magpul, are um, halfway decent options. And so it's what we have here in front of us is we have a fully kitted out Harris. We've got a uh, BNT Atlas. Uh, this is the, this is one of the V8s, V, that's not a PSR, no. Um, We've got an Atlas Cal. We've got a Magpul, because everybody wants to talk about the Magpul. Um, the other good options are the MDT, uh, the um, Skypod, and then Thunder Beast also makes another really good bipod. Tier one makes a bipod, that's halfway decent. Um, we just don't have those here. But they have very similar features to the Atlas and um, some of these other ones. So the big one I get asked about the most though is the Harris versus Atlas to date. And there's features that the, B and T has that are less than desirable for, for a lot of people. Uh, and there's features that the Harris has that, or doesn't have that I think people want to have a tendency to want to use. Um, and so we'll talk about those. So working between these two, um, the Harris, uh, this one is on Jimmy's rifle, um, set up with a quick deploy method taught by Ridgeline defense, um, up out of the Northeast. Uh, the thing, the biggest thing that the, the Harris has that the others don't is the ability to fast deploy. So something like 550 cord gives you the ability to fast deploy. Um, in my experience, and this is my experience alone, um, it has not been something that I have necessarily needed to use in any real world environment. Um, not to say it's not a good feature. Obviously there's, my experience is mine, not everybody's. Um, and so, this is a great way of setting up with this 550 cord, something obviously taught by Ridgeline Defense uh, to, to do that. The uh, also has fast deploy legs. Uh, this, this model does anyways. They have other ones that have like these little wheels that can adjust. What the Harris does not have is it does not have the ability to sit at 45 um, in either direction. And uh, it basically, when you start trying to adjust the legs into different lengths, it becomes a little more of a chore than just get, deploying it all the way out is significantly easier. Um, something like the, oh, and the Harris does not pan at all. And that's gonna be critical coming into this one. Cause one of the biggest complaints of the Atlas. So working with the Atlas, what the Atlas has the ability to do is pan. And what that can do is, is when you start trying to pan on this, it creates where you have an unstable shooting position where the barrel is not perpendicular with the legs. And so you can tighten this down. There's wrenches and stuff to make this as tight as you want so that the panning feature is minimized. You really don't ever stop it. This is the V8. The PSR actually limits this. I think this is almost 45 degrees of panning. Um, the PSR limits, about cuts it in half and cuts down about 20 degrees. Um, and it's got like a basically a nipple in the back that stops the panning feature within this bipod. The thing that the, the Atlas does though, is the ability to go between levels is just significantly easier than something like the Harris. You cannot fast deploy as you have to push the button um, to fold the legs. There is a company making, uh, they replace these pieces and then make it so you can fast deploy. But what happens is, is you then lose the ability to run the legs at the 45s. And the thing is, is on rooftops and other non-standard kind of shooting positions, I have used the ability to have the legs do stuff like this or at a 45 significantly more than I have used the ability to fast deploy. And I have Harris bipods. I have Atlas bipods. I have almost all of these. I have an MDT, uh, but the remove the panning complaint from this, the features that the Harris the Thunder Beast, the MDT has, I have used more than I have the ability to fast deploy the Harris. Uh, 
the the Atlas, uh, the other thing that's nice about this is there's no springs. It's a smaller profile for something like an L, like an LPDO gun or a run and gun type carbine. It's just a lower profile than a lot of these, um, especially something like the BNT Cal, which then removes the panning feature, but then makes a significantly wider bipod, which is great for support, not so great for being low profile. The uh, Thunder Beast and the MDT. The MDT is better for deploying the legs and gives you longer legs due to the, the legs stacking inside of each other. But this being a $250 bipod versus an MDT being an $800 plus bipod, uh, that really, if that feature is beneficial to you, then becomes a three or four times the price decision. Again, I own both, they have their place, it really depends on what you're using it for. Going from the, obviously the size difference, this is a Atlas Cal, which then you lose the panning feature. So there's no more panning feature, but what you do gain is the width difference becomes significant between the Atlas Cal versus the V8 or the PSR or any of these other bipods between these two. This one is on a Area 419 Arca adapter, which they make for um, the Harris and the other. Um, this just gives you the ability to move the bipod up and down any Arca rail. Uh, this one also adjusts, instead of having the adjustment on the bottom, it then includes a KMW adjustment lever to then adjust tension on the swivel left and right. Then the bipod I'm probably asked about the most is the Magpul. The Magpul is a option. Um, it just has a lot of play in it. Obviously being polymer, you have a lot of leg play. The adjustments, the adjustments and stuff end up making it so You just have a lot of play. It also pans just like the Atlas does, um, which I think can be removed. It just isn't as solid and and uh, doesn't give you the support I think that's really needed for a very critical piece of a precision system. Um, but again, if this is what's in your price range, it still offers the ability to swap feet and all the other things that the other bipods do, then you could probably make it work. One of the other abilities of being able to lock the bipod legs out and what that allows you to do is when shooting off of non-standard shooting positions, one of the benefits of this is I can then push or pull on these bipod legs. So if I'm getting on a barricade and I want to then pull against the legs, the legs aren't gonna fold because they are locked in position. What this allows me to do is, is it allows me to use the bipod legs and the fixed position to then soak up the recoil um, of the weapon. And so I don't have to take it up with my body as much as I can allow the gun to transfer it into the very stable, fixed welded position. You can also then push, but then what that also does is, is gives you the ability, you then have to soak up the recoil instead of the barricade doing it. Again, using this, I can do that, or I can pull and I can grab the bipod leg, depending on if I'm using a bag, not using a bag, what type of barricade, etc. cetera. Um, this is just, using this is what we have in front of us. But I have used the ability to push and pull on the legs, change the 45 degree versus either up or down, more so than I have quick deployment. But they are both options and they both absolutely work. It really comes down to what your price range is, what your application is, and how you want to use the bipod. In the end, they're all, there's lots of options. It really comes down to you in the end to figure out what your why is, how you're going to use it, and then make an informed decision based off of knowing what you gain or lose by making each, each decision. I'm Joe with Bruiser Industries, and I'm out. Are you not entertained? Um, okay.